Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to an informal little mini-series, I thought we'd do. So I've had a few people recently asking me how to do various bits and pieces and saying they're having a bit of trouble with various uh, techniques I use. So I thought I'd put together a little uh, mini-series to hopefully clear that up for a few people. Uh, if there's anything in particular you'd like to see me doing in these episodes, then uh, do drop me a comment let me know. There's, uh, the idea is to help everybody out, so that would certainly make life much easier. So we're going to start off with the rug glitch today. Let's see we're up in Sanctuary. So if you like what you see, do hit that big red button for me, and let's get stuck in. Okay then, rug glitch. So I've got a few bits and pieces prepared, so hopefully that'll smooth things along a little bit. So the first thing to remember with the rug glitch is that if your object snaps, you can't do it. In short, so if you've got a wall like an ordinary shack wall here, that snap on, that won't rug glitch, neither will the door frame that it snaps to. Uh, door frames in general are a little unreliable anyway, because the doors snap in. So those just won't rug glitch either. So that's worth bearing in mind. Tidy that up a bit. Other than that, most things will. This half wall here is a good example of something else that won't either, because it will snap into these. There you go. So that's not going to work either. Uh, there are techniques we can use to get around that fact, which I will cover in another episode. But we're just going to focus on the rug glitch for now. So, first off, three different types of rug out. I would not personally recommend using this one. It's nice and small, which is handy for confined spaces, but if you're uh, concerned about materials, this one uses more materials than this one. So that's the one I would recommend going with as a rule of thumb. There's rubber involved in this one, which can be a, a pain to get hold of. So we won't use that one. This is my personal favourite, at least as far as the visible ones go. So. Doing the rug glitch is really quite simple. It's a case of just putting your object onto it, usually by whatever contact point there is with the ground. So you've got the legs of the desk here. Grab your rug, and look at that, simple as that. In a little more detail, basically what it does is ignores the desk in this case, and just uses the rug's collision. Makes it, uh, gives you the ability to push it into solid objects, that sort of thing. So the easiest way, if you're having trouble with seeing whether or not the object's connected, let's move that a little further away, is that if you move it along the ground, and you're on a slope like this, you can see the end of the rug kind of floats there. So if you back up, watch the desk, there we go, it pops up. So it's now sitting on the rug rather than the ground. Different shaped objects will have different points of contact, so they'll behave differently. You have to experiment a little bit, and there we go. At this stage, you can just run over here, I'll find the wall, and we'll push that desk right into the wall, walk away. Which clearly, it won't do on its own. So, the thing to be aware of, however, is as we're using the collision of the rug, if you're going sideways on like this, you'll hit the rug, and it won't work. If you're working in a confined space, and your rug is hitting other objects, be it walls or furniture or anything else you place down, you can need a bit more reach in order to get the thing to work. That's where we'd use a chain of rugs. So we can start with the one on the bottom there, and just pile a few more on the top. Gives a bit more reach. Take your piece of furniture, pops up onto the end one there. And as you can see, we now have a line. So we'll go over to the first one, grab that, and we're still using only the collision on that first rug. So now come up to the wall, we can push it a lot further into the wall. Up to there. So if I leave that there for a moment. Take a quick run around into the house. Oh look, it's gone all the way inside. Dead easy. And if you've miscalculated, you can start part way along, grab it like that, and it's very easy to adjust. So the biggest mistake people make, apart from whether or not the uh, object is actually on the rug, is that they think it's not working because it hasn't connected, which I'm not going to faff around trying to do because it will take ages. And then when you move the rug and the object stays put, um, they think, oh, it's not working. So they come over and they hold the select button. 
and then both items go green. However, you're now using the collision of them both, and look, it won't work. So it's just a case of, look at the rug, get your crosshair on that, just tap the select button, whichever one it may be, so lightly like that, and only the rug will be selected. Or if you're using a chain of them, only the first rug, or whichever one you're looking at, really. And that is basically how it works. So if you've got a large enough rug, the same principle can be used to work with multiple objects. If you want to move a couple of desks, for example in this case, into a position where you need to glitch them, one to hop up there, one to hop up there. In this case they're not quite even heights, but you can play with that. See there's a limit to how close certain objects will sit to each other, just like that. Two desks, both on the rug, next to each other. Rug glitch them both together now. Dead easy. As you can see, I've got out a large one as well. Obviously if you work in a confined space, this just won't work. It's just going to get in the way and you'll hit the collision all the time. However, for certain things, it can be handy. For example, this gate. Although it does have the door in it, as it's not a snappable object, it works just fine. But finding the point in the centre that it uh, will contact the rug with can be an absolute pain in the neck. So, we will move it onto a larger rug, and there we go, it's just popped up. Now, it's... oh, there we go, it's not doing it. There's a good example of select all not working for you. Like that. There we go. Success. <laughs> so you see, it's now working. Only the rug selected. And you can now push it into this junk fence I've conveniently made earlier. And there we go. Now obviously that's quite an ugly version, but we'll go into some more detail on how to fine-tune that later. Probably in the next one. The big thing to be aware of is that when you want to take the rug out... Ah, it stayed there. That doesn't normally happen. <laughs> normally when you do it... Let's try over here and see what happens. That will happen. There we go. They just drop down. The other alternative is sometimes they pop up into the air, which is also very annoying. But if it means it's something like a chair or a desk or something, it's now closer to the ground than the animations will want, so if a settler comes up to use it, they'll look absolutely ridiculous. Now supposedly, if you leave the rug there, fast travel away, do something else somewhere else, and come back, you can then remove the rug. That might work for you guys, but I've never had any luck with it. So, if we don't want the object to sink down or fly off into the air, we need to find a way of working around leaving the rug there. You need to cover it up with another rug. That's certainly a, a workable option, but you tend to find the more stuff you pile up, the more you see characters and... Uh, settlers and stuff step up as they get onto the object, the rug in particular. So it's not necessarily the neatest option. One of the simplest ways is a little addition in unlock settlement objects here. Namely, we have two invisible rugs. A large one and a small one, specifically for using with the rug glitch, as you can see. Now the best thing to do there is to find a marker, for example a stool, make sure you place it somewhere you can find it again. So. We'll grab our desk again, move it into place, there we can just see I've moved it a little too far over there, just for convenience, sometimes it's better to actually do it that way, move that out of the way, there we go, same again, just quickly grab it, and we can glitch away to our heart's content. And as you can see, invisible rug sorted. There we go, that basically is the rug glitch. Now there are a few other techniques that uh, build into this or build off of this and work quite well with it. But I think I'll cover those in the next part. So I hope you found that helpful. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to keep up to date with everything I'm doing then you can find me on Twitter and Facebook. It's slash Darth Zion Games. And I will speak to you soon. Thank you very much.